listening to Simple Health Radio, the podcast about recognizing medical emergencies and promoting wellness. Your host is Dr. Amron, an experienced ER physician who has treated thousands of people just like you. Information on the show is not a substitute for professional medical advice. Always talk to your doctor or go to the nearest emergency room with any questions you may have. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Simple Health Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Emron. Today we'll talk about the case of a man I met several weeks ago who came in with an elbow problem. We'll call him Johnny. Johnny was a 56-year-old male. He was a smoker, but otherwise healthy. He actually worked as a mechanic and had noticed some pain and swelling in his right elbow. He remembered bumping it on the edge of a table a few weeks before he came in to see me, but the swelling became worse day by day. He tried over-the-counter medicines, he tried wrapping it, he took Advil and Aleve, he tried Bengay and some other creams, but nothing seemed to be helping it. Eventually, he came to the ER because he couldn't fully bend his arm and he couldn't extend it all the way, and his family became worried that he had broken a bone in the elbow joint. When I examined Johnny in the ER, he definitely had swelling to the elbow. It was actually on the, I would say, bottom part of the elbow, which is where the bony part is. It was very tender. It felt hot. It looked very red and irritated, but there was no entry point. There was no sign of any poking or puncture wound. He tried to flex and extend for me, but he was definitely very limited. The left arm had full range of motion. He was able to do everything properly, but the right elbow, he just couldn't get it straight and he couldn't flex it all the way. I advised him that we would need to do some basic testing. So we started with an x ray, which did not show any broken bones. We then did some blood work, which was all normal. He did not have any evidence of a white cell count elevation, meaning no signs of any clear infection. All of his other labs were normal. He was not diabetic. He didn't have any liver or kidney problems. And then I advised him that we would need to do a special procedure to drain some of the swelling out of the elbow. I already knew what the patient had, but I wanted to guide him through the process. And this patient had olecranon bursitis. So olecranon bursitis, that's basically swelling of the elbow, and that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. The olecranon is actually a special part of the bone. That's the very pointy part that people feel on the bone or along the elbow itself. There's no fat, there's no cushion or muscle that overlies it, so it's in a very shallow position. But there is something called a bursa, and a bursa is somewhat of a lubricant or a ball bearing. It allows muscles and bones to slide past each other very, very smoothly. Just like there's ball bearings and moving parts in a car, we have the same type of situation in the elbow itself. So what happens is the elbow has a smooth motion back and forth, and other joints in the body also have a smooth motion with flexion and extension. These include the knees, the hips, the fingers, shoulders. So people do develop bursitis from time to time, In this case, because it was at the elbow, we call it olecranon bursitis. Now, in his situation, he worked as a mechanic, and he remembered bumping it on the edge of a table. So that would be a direct injury or trauma. Even though the x-rays were normal, that just tells us that he didn't break any bones, it triggered the bursa to become swollen and inflamed. So he developed bursitis. The problem with the bursitis is that it swells rapidly and there will be fluid that collects inside of it. If it's just simple fluid, it will typically be clear, and that can be drained by a simple needle procedure. However, if it becomes infected with pus or bacteria, then we call that a septic joint, and that's a more serious problem because it can lead to permanent damage. The bacteria can actually eat away at the inside of the joint, and that can cause issues that will last for years. So in his case, it was bursitis due to trauma, but there was no evidence of any infection because if you remember, we did the blood work and it all came up normal. Now, in his case, we did a simple procedure by using a needle inserted into the elbow, right into the pocket of that bursa, and we drained off some of the fluid. All of the fluid was clear and there was no signs of any problems. The patient had immediate relief because that fluid was drained out of his elbow. We then wrapped it with an ACE bandage and we sent him home with some pain medications. We called him a few days later, and he was feeling much, much better. He did not end up needing any antibiotics. He was just taking a leave for some of the pain. He did not want any other medications, but he was grateful that he came in when he did because he was able to go back to work, and he felt really, really good. Now, there are some cases where the bursitis does not improve, despite all the efforts that we talked about. So in those cases, a steroid injection may actually work. 
Usually this is done by an orthopedic doctor or sports medicine doctor who feels very comfortable with injecting that part of the body. The way that the steroid works is it calms down the swelling and the inflammation, allowing the body to reabsorb some of that fluid. Over time, everything usually improves rapidly as long as nothing's broken or infected. Now, the problem with bursitis is that it's in an area that has a lot of movement back and forth. So the elbow is a very shallow joint. There's a high risk that it's going to redevelop with any future injuries. People who are mechanics or factory workers, people who do a lot of repetitive motion, putting things on shelves, anything where there's injury to the elbow itself is going to be a higher risk for the bursitis. Fortunately, there's nothing special that needs to be done as long as people are aware of what the complications can be. So if there's an infection, you're often going to have fever or pus. If you're going to have bleeding or bruising, that can be a sign of some circulation issues. If there's numbness or tingling, then that could be a sign of a nerve issue. But all other typical issues are going to resolve fairly quickly. Now, the interesting thing about the elbow with the olecranon bursitis is the location of it. Again, because it's so shallow, It's very easy to injure over and over again. And there are some people who can develop chronic bursitis, meaning even when there was no injury, it keeps on getting swollen and infected, or it keeps on getting swollen and painful. And those people become miserable because they find that they can't work in the jobs they did before. It's hard for them to sleep. It's hard for them to be active and functional. If they do a lot of sports, it might limit them with, for example, playing tennis or baseball. And so those people usually end up seeing an orthopedic doctor or a sports medicine doctor to determine if they need to do any special treatment. So I hope you learned a little bit about bursitis, specifically olecranon bursitis, which is swelling of the elbow joint. You can see information about this topic on our website. We have an active blog as well. If you have some experience or photographs of your olecranon bursitis, please share them with us on social media. We have a very active Twitter following, and I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have about this topic on a future episode. And I look forward to hearing from you again very soon. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Visit simplehealthradio.com to read the blog, follow links mentioned on this episode, and easily share content with your family and friends. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the 3 Out Radio Network. Be sure to connect with Dr. Amron on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Tumblr to send us your questions and ideas.